It's quarter to nine in the morning and Mr. Yinka Odabina, head of history at Islington Green Comprehensive, is clocking in at the school just like he does every school day. His first class today ought to be five history, but they're not here and they're not likely to be because the school is on strike. 43 of the staff who are members of the striking NUT are at home. So are all 900 children. But even though the school is empty, the 22 non-NUT teachers, like Mr. Odabina, have been told to stay at their desks. Mr. Odabina, yes. how does it feel to be sitting here in an empty classroom? Well, it isn't very difficult. It is quite pleasant in certain ways. Why pleasant? pleasant in the sense that you can get on with the work, even though the pupils are not here. Uh, there are some departmental items that one has to cope with, which uh, I couldn't have done, actually, without this fortunate break. But you have been sitting here for seven days now, in a classroom, all by yourself. Doesn't it get you down a little? No, not at all. I could do with another three. Uh, well, three weeks, I should say, because I worked actually on my stocks last week I had to do some uh, changes, make some changes that is in the syllabus and I've just about come down to that today, thank goodness. You don't mark while you're teaching and you don't count your stocks while you're teaching, you don't uh, revise your syllabus while you're teaching. It's absolutely impossible in fact to do anything when the pupils are here, apart from teaching that is. Six floors of ultra-modern, architect-designed emptiness. 66 silent classrooms and half an acre of depopulated playground. And every 40 minutes when it's time for the classes who aren't actually here to change over, the tannoy system still sounds. And that's the signal for the teachers with no classes to teach to prepare their next lesson for no one. It's a solitary business. For seven days now, Miss Stocker, needlework, has been the only living soul on the whole of the third floor. Some of the staff, particularly in the technical block, find their colleague's strike gives them a welcome chance to catch up and work out new projects. But for others, the day can be less full. You get up to date on your paperwork, and then what is there to work on? For the physical education teacher, there's only really himself. You're using some of the time to keep fit, I see. Yes, well, I'm trying to keep in touch with the way the fitness of the pupils in the lesson has got to be fairly fit to keep up with them. How are you finding the strike? Um, leaves the school very empty but it gives us time to catch up with a lot of work that would be forced into our own time or left for future. Doesn't it seem a bit ridiculous that there should be teachers with no classes to teach? Well not really, the point of the strike was to keep the school closed and if 30 teachers can do that, it's no re really need to get the rest out. You know? But the idea of a teacher in front of an empty class is a bit ludicrous, isn't it? Well, it's not really an empty class if there are no classes there. We do administrative work. Do you feel at all strange bouncing alone in your own gymnasium? Well, yes, yeah, certain amount. You, you've got to work. The driving force behind the sleeping school is the acting head, Mrs. Pye. And to help her keep things moving, there's the acting deputy head, Mr. Heaven. How do you two personally feel as head teachers with no pupils? Well, I can say that normally, of course, I do quite a lot of paperwork and quite a lot of administration. And now I'm able to do the paperwork in peace without constant interruption from the children. But this, of course, is what the school is about. Do you not feel slightly strange about administering a school which is running this? Oh, well, of course one feels strange about it. I mean, it's quite different. The school normally is, is bustling and lively, and one has the children about, and one has a full staff, and of course, naturally, one feels a little, shall I say, uneasy, because the building is half empty, well, completely empty, apart from the members of staff in. One always misses children, and we, we are, of course, in the position that we don't have any at all at the moment. We are uneasy, but of course, we've got plenty to do. I don't think any has been wasting his or her time. The way that the school has gone on just as normal is rather uncanny. I mean, even the signal for changing classes is still working. Why is that? 
Well, we must, in fact, admit that this is really a technical thing. We keep the pips running because when we turn them off, they do, in fact, tend to go wrong when we re-put them on. The main thing is, of course, that they are very useful to the staff, but I must say this isn't the main reason for keeping them on. It is the purely technical reason. On the other hand, they do give the staff a chance to gauge the time of day, which is very difficult with no children about. The staff, on the whole, are conforming to their normal timetables, staying in their rooms, in their bases, working. Then when they have free time, they go to the staff room or to the marking room or to the library. And on the whole, they do, in fact, conform to the times which are marked out, of course, by the PIP system. Now, why do they follow their normal routine so closely? What's the point of a teacher staying in his own empty classroom? Well, we felt ourselves that, to start with, it would be much more satisfactory for staff to have the normal routine as far as possible. Otherwise, of course, it would be rather rather difficult for them, in fact, to actually estimate what sort of time of day it was and what they were doing and how, in fact, they could spend their time most profitably. If they were just working as they felt like, we really felt that they would, in fact, be rather in a rather difficult situation because the day would seem rather endless, whereas, in fact, having free time, which is laid down on the timetable, does give them a break. They don't have the terrible spur of feel, feeling that they've got to work all through the day from nine till four. We thought, and the teachers themselves agreed, that if they were to sit around in the staff room for very long, this was obviously one thing that they had in mind, and I think so did we, then obviously an element of non-purposeful existence might come into things, and this might be where we would find difficulties. In the event, of course, they meet communi communally at their break, at their lunchtime and after school um, in the normal way that they would. Can it be so purposeful, though, really, to spend all day in an empty classroom? Well, I think, why, I think you tend to keep emphasising this. Obviously, it's not purposeful in the sense that um, teaching children obviously is the normal thing that they would have done. But one emphasises here that they have been doing useful school work which will benefit both the school themselves and the children in due course. You have to admire the teacher's devotion to duty, really. There's even a lollipop man waiting outside the school at Islington Green. It's a pity, really, that the children weren't there to appreciate it.